Thank you. This is Ella. Say hello. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Uh, so first off, uh, I wanted to go a little bit uh, about myself. Uh, I'm a dad, evidence. Uh, uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm also an executive of a company. But most importantly, uh, I'm a coach and I'm a dad, right? Really important to me uh, that, that uh, these things are, you know, the legacy, my legacy. And that's why the LinkedIn profile. But I'm also, another fact, by the way, I believe I'm the oldest person to be presenting today. <laughs> and I'm a complete failure, evidently, because at 16, these girls have done more than I've done in 43 years. But anyway, well, we're doing some cool stuff now. So let's start with a little pop quiz. Yep, it's Saturday, it's the morning, you're not in school, but let's start with a pop quiz. Everyone, just close your eyes for me, and I swear I will not take your wallets. Okay, imagine in your mind's eye what a coder looks like. A coder could be a software engineer, a hacker, whatever. In your mind's eye. Everybody got it? Awesome. Open your eyes. How many of you guys saw this dude? Raise your hand. Okay. A lot of folks. This is what the world says a hacker looks like. It's a male. He's probably wearing a hoodie somewhere. He may be in a basement according to some presidential candidates. This is what the world perceives as a coder. Well, I was in a company where we had a bunch of coders. We actually had over 800 of them, and we were about a 4,000 employee company worldwide. Of those 800 coders, 10 were women. Not 100, not 800, 10. Of 800 people in our company that were doing coding, 10 were women. We had a problem. Why was this? Why did this exist? Why was this happening? So I started doing some research. And not the research that you would see at a college where you're in a room for six months, you're looking. No, I Google searched. That's how we research these days. Or for now, we ask Alexa what the deal is. And what we found is that this was actually a problem not only indicative to my company, but it was a global problem. There weren't enough women in technology. Right? So here's a great stat, and like our presenter, our funny presenter before this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk slowly when I talk about these stats. So really, women in STEM, women represent a mere 24% of the STEM workforce. So this is of all the people in science, and by the way, science, technology, engineering, and math is what STEM uh, stands for, only 24%. One in seven of engineers are female, and only 16% of STEM professionals portrayed family, in family films are women. A little bit more research, they're underpaid. Women make up less than 25% of the graduates in the highest paid STEM categories. And that for every dollar earned by a man in STEM, a woman makes 14 cents less. More stats. They lack role models. And this is the area where we're focusing on with Ella the Engineer. Nationally, only 14% of physics faculty women, excuse me, members are women. And the media continues to portray programmers as geeky men, like our friend from the famous show, Mr. Robot. So what did I, and, and lastly, they feel like a STEM is a boy thing, right? Funniest story, I have, uh, Ella is my youngest, she's eight, Frankie is my middle, he's 10, and Nicolette turns 14 today. I'm pretty excited about that. Nicolette came to me one day and said, Dad, I'm really, really struggling with math. I'm terrible at math. This boy in my class, he's so much smarter than me. I said, okay, Nicolette, what are your grades of math? She said, 99. <laughs> said, OK. When I did math, a 99 would have been awesome. But I guess every, evidently, grading has changed since I've been in school. She's actually awesome in math, right? So while more men are coders, women are actually better than men in coding. So we have all these problems, all this, this, this systemic problem. There aren't enough women uh, in coding. Uh, companies are trying to, and a lot of folks are focusing on this right now. And all we're seeing is in the media, out in the play, in movies and TVs, this is what coders look like. So that was my what now moment. So I had a problem in my company. There was bigger problems in the world. How do we get more girls to get excited about coding? And we want to make it, take it from the dude that I just showed you to where we are here today, where girls around the world are coding our computer science, get excited about it. Because by the way, every profession that's out there 
in the next couple of years, we'll have some tech component. Every profession, doctors, lawyers, and some actually may be replaced by technology. So we have to, if you're afraid of technology, don't be afraid anymore. It's going to be part of your life. So this was my what now moment. What do I do? So I went out and I said, let me see what my kids are watching. Let me go and say, hey, hey Ella, what are you watching on TV? And so we saw the normal sort of programming, right? So Sid the Science Kid, Peppa Pig, my favorite, by the way, Teen Titans Go, really, really funny cartoon. Disney, of course, SpongeBob's out there, right? Then I started cartoons, I started looking at what they call live action, so where humans are in the shows. And we saw the same thing. You're starting to see a pattern here, right? Although Disney has done a really good job in profiling strong women, none of these folks have any computer science, any technology, nothing involved in it. What now, right? So like uh, Gandhi said, you have to be the change in the world, right? You have to be it. So I was 43, 40 years old at the time. What do I do? Well, I had an Allie McBeal moment, and probably most of you are too young, some of you not, to remember Allie McBeal. Allie McBeal was a show, they called it a dramedy, a drama and a comedy. Allie McBeal was a lawyer, and now she was the focal point of this show. And what happened was, because of the, and it was a really funny show, very quirky, but what happened was the amount of girls that went into law school skyrocketed because of Allie McBeal. The power of media and the power of TV is exponential. So that's where I wanted to start. And so I had my Allie McBeal moment, and I created Ella the Engineer. I was 40 years old, and I said, what can I do? Hey, let's make a comic book. I didn't know how to draw. I didn't know how to tell a story. I've been an executive in a company forever, so I know how to make things up sometimes. Um, so Ella, this is one of our first drawings of Ella, thanks to a friend, and this is a newer drawing. We got a cartoonist, a really famous uh, dude that actually drew for Disney. We had a writer, Valerie, who wrote in the gaming sector, and we created this comic book called Ella the Engineer. Ella was surrounded, and the theory and the idea about Ella was every episode or every story code, something would go wrong with technology, and they wouldn't call a boy, like Barbie did three years ago in some sort of magazine. They would call Ella a girl, because she can code, and she knows what to do, right? And so she'd be surrounded by all these different characters. So we had this whole environment. She had a tablet. So it's kind of like, if you remember, it's uh, Bob the Builder meets Handy Manny, right? That sort of intersection. So every episode, they would call Ella. She had Tabby, which was her tablet, Mac, which was her trusty computer, and then Smarty, who was the smart Alec iPhone that she carried around. And then she was surrounded by uh, uh, her friends Rubik, her grandparents, Mayor Wilson, and the dude who's in green is Glitch. Glitch was her antagonist. Glitch would mess things up, right? So when the, our phone's not working, what do we say? Oh, there must be a glitch with it, right? So the idea, Glitch would go into all these systems, and we ran three stories in a comic book, which Ella actually has with her, and we have copies with us. It's free of charge. Um, stories range from things that would be very common in her life. So a GPS in her, her grandparents' car. Glitch messes it up. Ella's asked to come in and fix it so she get to her concert. So everyday life of a teenage girl, but with technology surrounded. The second one was the mayor loves Jiffy Graham. Very, very interesting how life meets reality or, or fiction meets reality with Instagram or Twitter these days. Um, but the mayor loved Instagram and Glitch went in and would mess up all his pictures. So who did he call? Ella the engineer. And she would come in with her computer and code and fix it. And then the last one was a gaming one where her friend Rubik and her were, were gaming, they loved it. Glitch came in again and messed it up. So now we built this comic book and now we, you know, there was a couple of what now moments in this entire scenario. And so what we're thinking is Ella 2.0. We actually went to a group and we redesigned Ella, made her a little bit more modern looking, added some additional friends, all of which have interest in science technology, engineering, and math. We created a backstory for Glitch. So Glitch and Ella were once friends, and they went to a makerthon, and Ella kicked his butt. So he got really mad and got sucked into a computer, and now he's Glitch, right? 
So he, she beat him. So the story of it is where, and she has a brother who's into science, goes to MIT. So we built this whole backstory for Ella. And what we want to do as a what now moment for Ella is we see Ella as a Saturday morning cartoon. Now I know I'm dating myself. No one does Saturday morning cartoons. It's all on YouTube and, and the iPhone and the iPad. Uh, but we want to start talking, and we have been talking to these folks, to see if we can get Ella Main Street. The idea is can we get Ella from a comic book into a cartoon to potentially a movie and then you know wherever we want to go with it. The 360 brand where she's teaching on iPhones, there's games, all sorts of stuff. So the ultimate goal when I started this out and the point of the story is I'm 43 years old and I created a comic book, which means you could do anything at any point. And I'm so inspired by the girls here today at 16 building companies, just so absolutely inspiring. But what we believe at Ella, and by the way, I know Ella will be successful in mainstream, by the way, when we have a Thanksgiving Day uh, float. So Ella floating out or doing something on her computer or whatever. But we believe if you can see it, you can be it. Thank you very much.